in this place in our lives. Glory to God. What a joy, what a privilege to know you, to serve you, to worship you, to learn of you in your word, and to be led of your Holy Spirit. We're so honored that you're our Father, that Jesus, you're our Lord, and we dedicate this time to you as we dedicate our lives afresh this day. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. amen. Praise God, amen. Well, if you're out there in Facebook or whatever platform this is presented on eventually, <laughs> we just thank you for joining with us today. We're so honored that you would take time out of your busy schedule to make us and this service a part of your lives. We're here to talk about Jesus. We're so thankful for him and all that he represents to us in terms of the Father's love. And, you know, we invite you and encourage you today. At the end, we're going to pray. If we get to the end, <laughs> we're going to pray and, and uh, give you an opportunity to be born again. I've shared my testimony many times, but uh, most of you know by now I, I died a number of years ago. I'm 67 years old now, I believe. <laughs> you know, you get older, you lose count. <laughs> when I was a kid, I can remember counting half years. I don't do that anymore. They come here too quick. So, Anyway, I remember when I was around 20 years old, I had overdosed on drugs and died. And I went to heaven, much to my surprise. The truth is, I was a very depressed individual. I thought all too much about death throughout my life as a child and as a young adult. And I finally, uh, one evening, took a bunch of medication. It was some prescription meds I had for a bad back. Took a bunch of these meds and, and uh, you know, always after the fact. Yeah. After the fact, I thought, well, this is kind of stupid. Now, I'd made numerous attempts to kill myself over the course of my life. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I finally was starting to have a little bit of sense, at least, because at least after I'd taken the pills, I thought better of it. And I tried, to, I don't mean to be gross, but I tried to throw up those pills. And so I went into the bathroom and threw up a bunch of those pills. It looked like I threw up the whole bottle full, but evidently not enough or not quick enough, because the next thing I knew, I died and I'd gone to heaven. Mm. And uh, I brought up that I had read about death, read books on death and dying by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and different books about those who died. And, and uh, I can't think of his name now, Morris Rollins, I believe it was. I think so. That uh, wrote a book Doctor. on doctor. Yeah, he's a doctor. <laughs> he was kind of an interesting fella. I remember seeing him on TV uh, after I'd gone to Rama, and he looked kind of glum. <laughs> He wasn't a real, I can't think of how you'd say it. But he wasn't he, a real lighthearted fellow. He, he really wasn't. And he had spent a good part of his time as an emergency but room he, doctor. But he became one. He did, he did, he sure did. Well, anyway, he, uh, he related instances of people committing suicide and dying on the table in the emergency room and going to hell. And um, so I really prepared myself on the basis that I was committing suicide a lot of churches, that's doctrine. You commit suicide, it's such a supreme insult to God, he'll send you straight to hell on the express elevator, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and here I was, I, I committed suicide, I ended up in heaven, not mm -hmm. hell, all by the mercy of God. I, I, I remember standing in heaven in front of my paternal grandmother, Granny Thorpe, and, and relatives from centuries before, you know, dating back centuries before, I remember standing there and I, I was so shocked I was in heaven. And I said, how could this be? How can I be in heaven? Mm -hmm. And I was instantly reminded that as a child, six, seven years old as a child, I had invited Jesus to be the Lord of my life, to come into my heart. And uh, that was why. And my next statement was, now mind you, I didn't know I was coming back then. But my next statement was, had I known it was this easy to get to heaven, I'd have told everybody. You know, because I didn't, I had no idea. Even though I'd received Jesus, I had no idea how easy it was for anybody and everybody. God's not looking to weed people out. He's done everything he can to bring people in. Right. He's a good father. People yeah. talk about, you know, if God's a good God, he won't send you to hell. No, he's fighting tooth and nail to keep you from going to hell. That's right. That's why he sent me back. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's the only reason I've ever come up with it was I made that statement. I said, if I'd have known this before I died, I'd have 
you know, if I'd known this before, I, I would have just told everybody, and I try to tell everybody I can, mm. how good the Lord has been to me and how much he wants to be good to them. Amen? Yeah. And so anyway, uh, that's why I'm here today. I, I, I don't know why I got into that so much, but I want to tell you I'm forever. Th- There's not a day that goes by I don't think of and have such incredible gratitude to the Lord for his salvation. Mm-hmm. And, and my heart is for everybody to experience that. Amen. If you're, you know, you're out there and you've never been born again, today is your day. Today's the day of salvation. Yeah, Don't amen. tell yourself, i got to wait till I get better. I couldn't have been any worse, folks. <laughs> I, I was living a rebellious life. I, I didn't know God wanted more out of me in this life. I really didn't. And, and uh, I, I suspected he probably wanted more than I was giving him. But, you know, I, I was of a mind that if I gave my heart to God, he'd send me somewhere I didn't want to go. There's nobody I don't want to go with Jesus now. But back then, it kind of scared me a little bit. And so anyway, uh, I'm so thankful to the Lord. I'd serve him anywhere. And and, uh, that's why I'm here. And I'm here to tell you that he loves you. I couldn't get good enough. I'd been out eating pizza and drinking sangria. Mm. And I had drank too much sangria that night. That's one reason my judgment was compromised. Amen. Was I'd been drinking, and, and yeah. you know a lot of people drink to escape things. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know how you can tell if you're drinking too much when you tell yourself, "I have to have a drink." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I don't drink at all now. I got plenty for me and you both. Back when I did drink, I'm not going to condemn you if you drink. I, I'd rather you didn't feel the need to though. And so we're going to talk about that, and and it's not to guilt you out. It's not to make you feel bad. I just want to share some things with you, and uh, listen, I I had lived my life on my terms by my own insights and direction, and it led me nowhere I wanted to be. That's one reason I killed myself. My life was so miserable, and the Lord propositioned me one day. I was standing, I was standing on a street corner and got propositioned by God. That doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad he propositioned me. He, he, it's where you he, could hear him. <laughs> he did. He, he called to my remembrance. Now, when I say God did this, I'm saying down on the inside of me. Yeah. These thoughts began to rise up out of my innermost being. The, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Yes. In other words, he lights our way by his influence within. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so here I was, and it started rising rising up within me what have you done with your life nobody else was around me as far as I could see for a hundred yards nobody else around me except people in cars driving by and their windows were up <coughs> and so that thought occurred to me what have you and and I thought well I did this this you know it's like I could see my life before my eyes and it occurred to me my life was going in one big circle and then it went in another circle a little mm. bit smaller, and another circle a little bit smaller. Wow. And later it occurred to me, it was more like riding a Ferris wheel. You know, Ferris wheel goes up and down, has its highs right. and its lows. Right. <coughs> but it's as if that Ferris wheel was in quicksand. Mm. So the highs got lower, the lows got lower, and, and uh, the Lord then said, what were you trying to do? I said, well, I just wanted to be happy. No sense lying to God. Right. I just wanted to be happy. I thought... Drugs would make me happy, because and, and, and the friends that drugs would would help me cultivate would make me happy. But most of the friends that I did drugs with really had no greater allegiance than I had pot. You know, they, I'd run out of uh, drugs and they'd run the other way, yeah. and, and not all of them, but a good share of them. And, and uh, you know, thank God I had some incredible friends. I'm not going to discount them all, and, and I'm so thankful that some are still friends to this day. And I want to tell you. I, I apologize to you for what a jerk I was when you knew me back in Brayton. Because at my best, I was a jerk. I was miserable. And, you know, misery loves company. And so I had a tendency to make people around me miserable. <laughs> and I regret that. My my real responsibility was to make Jesus known, not, not you know, express my flesh. And that's all I did. Well, anyway, <clears throat> so, you know... The Lord then asked me, he said, well, I want you to, well, he didn't ask me, he made a statement. He said, uh, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy. I want you to be happy. Mm-hmm. He said, in fact, if you'll give me your life, I'll give you a life that's worth living, a life that others would envy. Now, listen, <clears throat> go back. We don't have time right now. <clears throat> but get you an amplified Bible. Go online. You can look it up. Excuse me. I've got to drink this. 
you can look it up online, but look at the amplified version of Matthew chapter 5 and read specifically the start of each beatitude. Happy, fortunate to be envied is the man. Yep. That's what blessed means. And, and so uh, he, he said, I, I didn't even know the beatitudes in, and it sounded so foreign that God actually cared about my happiness. Yeah. But he cared about it. He cares about your happiness. Yeah. And so he, he made that proposition. If you'll give me your life, I'll give you a life worth living. And I realized, subsequent to that, as I pondered what the Lord had said, I made a couple of conditions, by the way. One of my conditions was that anything he told me in here had to, had to harmonize with what was written in the Bible. I didn't even know what was written in the Bible. Yeah. I tried to read my most recent at that point remembrance of reading any of the Bible was trying to read Revelation and I thought John must have found mushrooms on Patmos because some of the things he described were so outrageous to me I had no idea <clears throat> well there's you know what there's about to be released on the air some really outrageous things mm -hmm. in the days to come be yeah. prepared amen yeah. no Jesus glory to God mm -hmm. so anyway I, I, it, it occurred to me and my prayer became Lord I don't even know how to live teach me how to live and you know what he did? He led me to his word. It was about that time I had become acquainted with, with a fellow named Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Hagin Sr. And uh, there were a lot of good preachers and teachers of the Bible on radio at that time and on TV at that time. I loved to listen to Carl Schroeder. <laughs> he really had a heart for the laws yeah. and a heart for the people of God. He was over in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. He's gone on to glory now to his reward. Well, anyway, um, you know, I just, I, 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 the Lord led me to the Word, and, and the Word led me to the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and He started enlightening me as to the Word of God, helping me to see and to learn. You know, over in, in uh, Romans eight fourteen, it says, For they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. That word sons denotes maturity. And, and, and as you follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, in your study of God's Word and throughout life, you're going to find He's going to lead you to accountability, responsibility, but not just that, into blessing and into honor. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, if you'll humble yourself under the hand of God, <laughs> hand is a reference to the Holy Ghost, by the way, if you'll do that, that He'll exalt you in due season. Yeah. God's looking to promote you, folks. Yeah. But He can only do it if you will learn to live life on His terms. And I want to tell you, His terms aren't grievous. No. <clears throat> In fact, you know what? When you delight yourself in the Lord, and that's what I was learning to do, by the way, when you delight yourself in the Lord, it tells us that He gives you the desires in your heart. In other words, you'll start finding that you want what God wants for you. Yes. And you want what God wants Himself. <laughs> it's yes. a two-way street. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I got off on that so much, but I want to tell you, there's <laughs> nobody more for you than Jesus. Right. There, he, he died for you. Mm -hmm. He suffered a hell so bad that in three days and nights, He resolved the sin issue for all of humanity, past, present, and yet to come. That's right. Glory to God. How 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 much there's no greater love, the word of God says, than a man lay down his life for another. Jesus laid down his life for you. Yeah. He he didn't come to take from you, he came to give to you. Mm -hmm. and, and it was at the Father's uh, instruction and direction that he did this. Glory to Jesus. So the Father's every bit as good and better. Amen. Than you ever imagined yeah. good could be. <laughs> Glory to God. Well look over with me if you would. To, let's go to Romans chapter 8 and try to pick up where we left off. There's so much I want to share with you. And uh, <clears throat> we we now have taken a lot of time that I hadn't planned to to share these things. But let's look at Romans chapter 8. We've been talking about the Holy Ghost. We've been talking about praying in the Spirit. And I want to give you uh, some examples of the benefits we've enjoyed having learned to pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, I know that... that I depended greatly on the Holy Spirit when I went to Bible school. Most of you that know me back in Bradenton can remember uh, back when I had uh, lived there that I wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. I had, you know, my mind, my my uh, reasoning had diminished greatly due to the drugs I'd taken. And uh, there were times, I, I remember there being times I couldn't remember what day of the week it was, mm. what what month of the year it was. 
I remember my mind was so eroded from all the pot I'd smoked, all the alcohol I had drank. I can remember going to a, a couple of times, going to apply for a, a, a job with somebody and having to sit there and think and focus and try to remember how to spell my own name. Mm. You know, my name's Michael. It's not real complex, kind of a common name. But I had to remember, was it the A before the E or the E before the A? It, and uh, it's the A before the E, by the way. But I had to think. No, no, that's the same name I'd written on my worksheets in school all my life. Right. I'd written on other employment applications. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it was my name. Mm -hmm. I owned it, <laughs> but I I couldn't remember. That's how bad my mind was. And so, <clears throat> can you imagine how it affected me when I was still dealing with some of these issues? And the Lord said, "I want you to go to Bible school." Uh, 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 throughout high school I felt like it was my job to provide entertainment in every class and I could sit in the back of the room I was a class clown uh, but I, I, I didn't have any courage to come up front and do anything productive and, and I, I just I had to kind of bluff my way through I think the only reason I graduated from high school or made it from grade to grade was the teachers in the grade I was presently in couldn't bear the thought of having to have me in their class the next year. <laughs> and so they got rid of me the quickest way they could by passing me on down the line. I, I became a joke just by being there. And, and uh, well, anyway, so I was really, you know, that was my thought. I, I was at school, but I wasn't really in it. And, and so... I didn't have any concept of how to really study. And here the Lord's talking to me about something as serious as heaven and hell, as serious as eternity. I want you to go learn about this. And, and uh, I can remember thinking, man, I don't know. Uh, but I knew it was God. Mm -hmm. Listen, God will never lead you anywhere or call you to a task that he doesn't know you're more than enough to deal with by your reliance upon him. That's right. That's the key, though, are you relying on him? And you yeah. can. You know, a lot of you haven't, you know, you, you just haven't learned yet. You can depend on God. But I'm here to tell you in advance, if you'll keep following Jesus, you'll learn to depend on the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's so good. He's yes. so faithful. Yes. <clears throat> uh, anyway, so... I began to pray, and one of the things I did was I prayed in the Spirit. I prayed in the Spirit through classes, and I did it under my, I did my best to do it under my breath, uh, but I can remember one teacher, and I'm going to call his name, I don't think he would mind, it was Brother <laughs> Rodney Lloyd. I think I, I evidently started speaking out in tongues aloud a little bit in a class, and I was probably being disruptive, but I didn't intend to be. I wasn't trying to be Brother Rodney. I apologize if I was. Well, anyway, um, uh, I, here I am in this class, and I, next thing I know, the teacher stops the class and says, you don't have to pray in tongues all the time. Well, I did. Mm -hmm. I really did. I was so dependent on the Lord because my mind was in a stage, in a state of recovery. I'll say yeah. it that way. Yeah. You know, the Lord restores our soul. Yes. I love the 23rd Psalm. And your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. Right. Right. Glory to God. So I needed some restoration, and the Holy Ghost helped me. And, and I made a B in Brother Lloyd's class the first year. Uh, I think I made a B in one class in my second year. And, and uh, the rest of my grades were A's, as I recall. Mm -hmm. I did quite well. That's pretty good for a burned-out druggie. Yeah. Amen. And, and uh, some of you may need some evidence. I don't, I, I don't know <laughs> if I have my transcript still or not to prove it. I think we do. <laughs> well, anyway, look down here if you would with me. Romans 8. Romans 8. And let's back up, if you would, to... Uh, let's go to 26. You know, it's kind of funny. You just... I, when I... When I go to a particular verse I always re realize that the verses prior set up the subject here yeah. and, and the verse prior to this is that your expectation of God will never 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 ever be in vain if you approach him in faith and so it's encouraging faith in the faithfulness of God here then in verse uh, 26 we'll pick up it says Likewise, in other words, just like the things we've already discussed, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Now, when it uses the term infirmities, it talks about, really it's talking about surpassing your natural limitations. That's one reason it's good to partner up with God, because He'll always enable you to surpass 
anything you could do alone. Amen. You know what? Let me give you an example of that. Moses, when he was among the Egyptians and in, in living in Pharaoh's court, when he was there, he began to sense the call of God on his life to deliver his brethren. Right. He tried to deliver a couple of them and ended up murdering an Egyptian and running for his life. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and uh, that's what he did on his own. But, but then, you know, he didn't want them to go tell Pharaoh, and they, they were about, and they did tell Pharaoh. It came to his attention. Well, anyway, so Moses fled there, and uh, this was when he was in the prime of his life. But he lacked the ability to do what God wanted him to do, and I believe he lacked it because he missed God's timing, and he thought he could do it himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's just my suspicion. Mm-hmm. Later on, when he's up in, in uh, 80 years uh, old or so, right. he, he's out in the wilderness and he looks over and there's a bush on fire mm-hmm. that keeps burning. <laughs> it's like the Energizer Bunny. It just kept burning and burning and burning and right. burning. And he finally makes his way over to it. And, and uh, what did he hear? Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy oh, ground. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing right. a little bit, but that's what he heard. Right. And the Lord started doing with him. He said, I've called you to deliver your people out of Egypt. And uh, Moses, by the way, Moses had a speech impediment, evidently. He couldn't even, and he said, I can't even talk. And the Lord said, well, I'll, I'll send somebody with you. Send <laughs> Aaron with him, ultimately. But anyway, so here he is, and the Lord deals with him, and he sends him back in as I won't say he was a decrepit old man, but what do you think of when you hear he was 80 years of age? You know, you don't think of a, a robust young warrior, and and yet he was everything God needed and wanted as right. a deliverer. And he sent him in there. It wasn't by Moses' might or by his power. It was right. by the anointing of God, the Holy Ghost, uh, had partnered with him. Mm-hmm. He went back in there and he delivered Israel out of that nation. He he confronted Pharaoh face to face. It wasn't anything behind the scenes. I mean, it was just face to face. And he delivered him. Amen? Mm-hmm. Well, look on down here. Uh, we're back over here. It says, uh, so I guess the thought is this. Moses more than exceeded his own limitations by his reliance on the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. And it wasn't without challenge. I mean, he took the staff that had turned into a serpent that he'd picked back. He took it in there, and Pharaoh's magicians basically did the same thing, but there was a difference. Moses' staff, his serpent, ate theirs. (laughs) God will eat the devil's lunch every time if you just watch him. Just trust him. Amen. (laughs) Well, so likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Yeah. I, I know that I, I, I've, I've had that dilemma at times. And, and you know what? We're learning the Word. As much as we know the Word, there's still more to learn. The Word is God, and it's infinite. It's yes. eternal. <clears throat> yes. And uh, I'm amazed at the things I learn out of the verses that I learned 40 or 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm still learning from many of those same verses. So here it is. He, he said, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself, I, I exchange himself for itself, because the Spirit is the Holy Spirit. He's God. He's not a thing. The Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. P.C. Nelson made a statement to the effect. He said what talks about groanings that can't be uttered, he's saying it's in in, uh, words other than those we normally articulate or use. You know, in other words, it's not talking about me speaking in my native tongue, which happens to be American English. So what's it talking about? It's talking about praying in the Spirit. And they can be groanings. You know, we're told over in Isaiah that except uh, Zion travailed, she didn't bring forth. Well, <clears throat> so here we go. It says uh, that he will make intercession for the saints. Do you suppose Do you suppose the Holy Ghost knows how to pray and get his prayers answered? I don't, I don't think the Holy Ghost would pray a prayer that couldn't be answered. Mm-hmm. There's not a prayer the Holy Spirit is going to be a part of that won't achieve what it's meant to do. So do you suppose if we learn to pray in the Spirit and give Him license to use our lips to utter 
his mm -hmm. words to achieve the Father's will, <coughs> do you suppose it'll work? I, I have no doubt. I've got no doubt. I, I'm so thankful to the Holy Spirit. Yes. I mean, there are times I just felt like I needed to pray. I didn't know what to pray for. I remember one night when Robin and I were engaged, I was <laughs> visiting her in her apartment at Indian Springs in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. That's mm -hmm. where we lived when we were going to, to Rama in Broken Arrow also. And I can remember while we were there, uh, one evening I was getting ready to leave, 7, 8 o'clock I think it was, I was getting ready to leave. We'd had lunch or dinner, well dinner by then I guess. Mm -hmm. And I was getting ready to leave and, and uh, mm -hmm. I just had this nagging down on the inside of me. By nagging, I just want to say discomfort. Yeah. Now see, there was a time when I said something like, there was a time I thought, well I just need a drink. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I didn't like that discomfort. Right. Have you ever had that? And I'm not here to condemn folks, and I don't recommend this course of action, but it used to be in my life, if I had some kind of a sense of distress, I'd just want to run from it. And so I, I can like remember, distress. I remember, that was a real common phrase in my vocabulary, i got to have a drink. Mm -hmm. I need a beer. Uh, I, you know, and, and I, I was always using drugs and alcohol to self-medicate. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, I, I'm just bringing a contrast between what happened here. I, I, I remember telling Robert, I said, I feel like we need to pray. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what we even needed to pray about. But we started praying in the Spirit. And, and uh, we just prayed, and, and we prayed till we got somewhat of a release. Now, what do you mean, Mike? I, I mean this, I mean, we began to give ourselves to praying in the Spirit, and there was an urgency about it. And, and we, we prayed and we prayed until things seemed to get light. In other words, we didn't run from that, that distress or that sense of distress. We confronted that sense of distress in the spirit and in the power of God. And, and what was it all about? Well, I'd gone on home and then it, I think it was around one in the morning, wasn't it? Uh, my roommate came came to my room, knocked on the door. I kept my door locked to uh, protect me from Van and, and Larry. <laughs> no, well, I didn't keep it locked. I just kept it shut. Probably said my snoring wouldn't keep them awake. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I hear a knock at my door. Mike, hurry up. Robin's at the front door in a robe. And uh, I think you had the ferret with you, didn't you? I did. Yeah, had the ferret. She's out. And, and, and now I want to tell you, this was one of the coldest nights of the year. It was cold. I think 55 degree below wind chill. There was ice all over the place. And uh, what had happened was she awakened to screams and, and uh, discovered that the building that she was in was aflame. It was on fire. Yeah. And uh, tragic situation, the mother and her child were lost. Uh, word had it later they discovered that the folks in her apartment had been uh, smoking dope and falling asleep and somehow a fire got ignited in that apartment. And she lost her life, she and her baby lost her life. And uh, the fire had raged, by the time I got down there it was more than, ha had to ha more than halfway consumed the building. Mm -hmm. Robin lived on the bottom floor and do you know that that fire burned all the way down to the the wall on that end of her apartment on the bottom and it burned the apartment above her before they were able to get the flames put out i mean just utterly devastated that apartment building and and why did it stop there i have an idea it had something to do with us responding to that discomfort prayer. through prayer rather than trying to escape it mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, you know, I'm just, I, I'm saying that not to condemn people that may have suffered tragedy and could have prayed but didn't. Yeah. Uh, I'm just suggesting maybe you didn't know about this before, but there's a better approach to that discomfort in many cases. Yes. And for us, we found that prayer, and particularly praying in the Spirit, was a, a better response to it. And uh, then later on, let me go on. I, I'm standing down there watching to see what's going on with this fire. And I, they had washrooms there that were separate little buildings that you could take your laundry into and wash and dry. Right. <clears throat> and they were using one as kind of a command post. And they brought in one of the one of the younger firefighters. He had slipped on ice, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know they're up there trying to miss this fire, but the 
the water when they misted it would absolutely freeze and so it was like they were pelting the fire ice with ice it. yeah and, and they had to uh, adjust their strategy but on top of it the wind was blowing I, I, I think they said it was 45 miles an hour it created a, a 55 below wind chill uh, between it and the bad. relevant really temp or the temperature at the time and I'm standing out there this guy is sitting beside me on the floor looking kind of pitiful he's in pain yeah and, and uh and I'm looking at that fire <laughs> and one of the effects of praying in the spirit is your understanding Paul told the church of Corinth your understanding is unfruitful mm -hmm. now that's real foreign to us today but what that means is your mind quits racing you know in other words you're not you're not trying to figure it out all in your own mind uh, struggling mm -hmm. and I'm standing there and I'm praying in the spirit still at this point now <clears throat> praying in the spirit and I hear that same familiar voice down on the inside the Holy Ghost and I and the Holy Ghost says speak to the wind <laughs> Lord and so I looked up into the the face of that wind and it's in you know how it was affected I said in the name of Jesus peace be still wind and it quit I mean like somebody flipped the switch that mm -hmm. wind stopped mm -hmm. and it was so funny later on we're watching the news because it was all over the news it was a real big event in that area and it was all over the news <clears throat> and on the news they were questioning the the fire chief on scene mm -hmm. and he made the comment he said it was really out of hand and we were losing it mm -hmm. he said and then all of a sudden the wind just stopped i mean even even the other people there noticed what happened i tell you if, if it wasn't for the holy spirit we wouldn't have known to pray to begin with mm -hmm. i probably would have lost my fiance We'd have lost everything material we had in that apartment, mm -hmm. uh, and, and other lives. Pro I, I have no, I, you know, a life was lost. Two lives were lost, and, and that's so tragic, so tragic. But I got no doubt because those apartments were full. I've got no doubt there would have been a greater loss of life had we not prayed, mm -hmm. and they'd have still been fighting that fire today yeah, <laughs> if it, if that wind hadn't stopped. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. I have gone on and on and on here. Robin, do you have anything to share? I, I, I really want to talk about some things. We want to talk about this world. You've been born, we've been born into a world of conflict and challenge. Yes. And, and uh, there is a way to respond to it. it. has to do with being filled with the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more next week. Yes. I'm so thankful to the Lord. <coughs> I'm thankful for His mercy in my life. Uh, there have been times in my life that, that uh, I, I, things would have blindsided me had not the Lord been able to speak to my heart. Mm -hmm. and, and the only times he's ever, uh, well, let me say it this way. Most of the time he's spoken to me has been when I've set myself apart to pray in the Spirit, quiet my mind, mm -hmm. and dedicate myself in focusing on him. But I want to tell you something. If you're ever around me and you see my lips moving, <laughs> I would say nine, but I think it's more like ten, ten, ten times out of ten. I'll be praying in the spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. It'll be to myself and the Lord. Amen. Robin, yeah. I, I invited well, you to talk. Then I'm start thinking. Again. I'm thinking several things. What do you want? <laughs> I'm thinking several things while you're sharing that are that I feel like are pertinent and good for us to latch on to. Several things. First, I'm thinking there are times that we have a let's see we feel disturbed disturbed in our spirit like we you know something's uncomfortable that's the best way i know to describe it and we sense a need to pray if we're not careful we may put our own spin or our own interpretation on it there are times that we have stood and prayed for loved ones who went on to glory yeah yeah i have no doubt they got a glimpse of glory and they weren't prepared they didn't want to come back that didn't mean they wanted to leave others hurting no that didn't mean they wanted to leave others struggling with it i think of smith wigglesworth's wife polly polly wasn't it polly, polly was it polly ralph i think it was um but 
uh, she had passed away, he came and home Smith and found Wigglesworth, her there. yes, and and he's a he had some remarkable anointings in his life. They um, conservatively estimated that something like twenty seven people. I think it was twenty three. Well, I think 27 people, one of his <laughs> nephews was on something. And I see Jim Andrews, we'll have to ask him. Um, <laughs> but he had, the Lord had used him to raise different people from the dead. Well, he gets home and he finds Polly has gone on, so he begins to pray and command her to come back. And do you know what she did? <laughs> she fussed at him. She said, how dare you? She said, I, don't you dare. I want to be in heaven. She had gotten enough of a glimpse. She said, my work is through here, Smith. My Let words. me go. Yeah, yeah. And, and here's the thing, there, are the, there we have loved ones who got glimpses and you just can't do a doggone thing about you can't. it. And listen, I, I came back and I'm glad I had the opportunity, but seldom does a day go by that I, I don't miss its home. Heaven's well, home. And I think you had a unique response whenever many years ago in your 20s when you had uh, endeavored to take your own life, you literally died. They were trying to resuscitate you. They were about to quit whenever... Hubert Robinson. Hubert Robin, Robinson. Wasn't he a police officer? He was. Yeah. Came Hubert, up. Hubert was a bear. He was a big man. So he was intimidating to say... But he was just as sweet or as kind as he was big. Yeah. Now, now he never had to arrest me. <laughs> a lot of others may have, but Hubert didn't. So I might have seen him differently than some folks. But well, he's very kind-hearted. I, so he just, was family to me in Bradenton, to at, our family. Yeah, at, but your response, <clears throat> you had an interesting response in heaven by saying, if I'd have known it was this easy to get here, I'd have told everybody. You know what? I, I have no doubt the reason you spoke those words was a immediate recognition that there was a work to be done that you hadn't given yourself to, yeah. that now you wanted to give yourself to if you'd have seen how easy it was to mm -hmm. share it with others. I, what am I pointing out? I'm trying to point out there are different situations. There are times that we, and listen, I think certainly I appreciated very much a teaching by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland after I believe it was her brother had gone on to glory. Yeah. The Lord spoke very clearly to them and told them, listen, they, whenever he went on to heaven, he didn't suffer. There was no suffering, none no. whatsoever. Said for the believer, it's like taking one step on planet earth and the next step into glory. You know what the Lord showed me a long time ago? Uh, he, he talks about people that have died I'm just going to be died physically, uh, passed from death unto life. They, it, that's how he describes it. But he says those, when he talks to the church at Thessalonica about his, those that are asleep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dying for the believer is no more difficult than laying down and going to sleep. Right. When I died, back when I overdosed, what happened was I took muscle relaxers. It stopped my heart, and I went to bed thinking I'd gotten rid of all that medication and it wasn't going to harm me mm -hmm. and uh, what happened was the girl I was married to then uh, she was my first and second wife we married twice we were gluttons for punishment well anyway she was awakened later in the night by me falling out of the bed because I'd gone into convulsions yeah I don't remember it right I right. don't remember any of that distress your spirit. so if you've lost loved ones in the Lord I don't care how violent their death may have appeared God's grace is so God's overwhelmingly absolutely. sufficient. And it's important that we know this. The Lord told Gloria and Kenneth that before her brother died, I believe he died in an automobile accident. Yeah. So before he died, I snatched him out of his body. Yes, yes. You know, so. And so this is important to be aware of, that there are different situations. We know of other situations where uh, people passed away, I guess similar to your situation. They weren't trying to end their own life, but they were perhaps... Uh, inebriated. They. I'm thinking of different ones who were high because they were struggling with addictions yeah. that went on to glory. And listen, the Lord didn't want them to go prematurely, but they had a say in that. And and we'll find out when we get in heaven. I've, I've yet to hear of anyone who went to heaven who said, oh, I didn't like that place at all. I didn't want to be there at all. No <laughs> one. Do you understand that we are travelers? We are tra spiritually speaking. The Word we're talks about pilgrims. how we're pilgrims. <laughs> we're passing through 
this life Amen. and our home is glory and is heaven Amen. so there is a place our loved ones are comforted and you know what the Bible the, the Word of God tells us that we are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses our loved ones who have gone on ahead of us that we that we miss and wish we're here and it doesn't matter what their age they are cheering us on Amen. they are pulling for us dad Hagen spoke about his sister who was in heaven and he at one point saw her spoke with her he p.s he wasn't seeking to see a dead person don't seek to see dead people don't seek to communicate with the dead you are opening doors whenever you do that let's not do that we can we can pray and i'll tell you the best way to draw close to a loved one in heaven and it's to draw close to our father because whenever we are drawing close and holding the hand of our Father, listen, he, our Father he, God, yeah. He's holding the hand, Amen. our Father God in heaven, He's holding the hand of our loved ones. So the best way to get close to a loved one that we miss is to draw closer to God. If they're in glory, if they're in heaven, isn't that the place we need to draw closest to? The way we do it is by holding God's hand. And they want us to be busy about the Father's work. We need to be busy sharing with others. We need to see the opportunities, seize the moment when we see opportunities to pray for different ones. Now, you were making an interesting point earlier on in the teaching. You were talking about before you came back to the Lord, how stress you would be under great stress or duress, yeah. and how how it would how you would say, "Well, I need a drink, or I need a beer, or, or you know what have you." And, and I want to something just hit me whenever you were sharing that, and I was thinking back. I'm looking at Victoria. Whenever whenever you were in the hospital and you had open heart surgery, this was planned surgery. This wasn't in a way it was emergency surgery. <laughs> the we were being pressed on <laughs> greatly. I don't think we had a clue. By every and, and medical personnel, yeah. that this needs to be done. It is needed imperative. Needed to have been done. They yeah, needed saying, to needed, be done this before needed this. To been done. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we were having to wade through that, pray through that, get a second opinion, you know, and, and what have you. But but something hit me whenever you were talking about the tendency for us to respond, and, and whenever you were in the hospital and when you had bled out. And they had given you, I didn't even find out until we got the hospital bill. And I thought, I want to see what happened, you know, how much blood they gave him. They gave him 24 units of blood total. They gave him 23. And that was in addition to recycling my blood. Yes. See, they yes. had hoped initially they'd be able to use my own blood and maybe add a little bit. Yes. I'll tell you something funny. <laughs> before, he went, volume, before he went into surgery, right. they brought us in for processing, had us sign different releases. One of the releases was a release that he could receive blood transfusions if necessary. And it was so blood funny. Products, yeah. I remember, I remember uh, I, again, <laughs> hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But I remember a funny little, oh. Uh, I don't know, somehow I stopped and focused on that a minute. Somehow it stood out to me, and I thought, I hadn't even thought of that. You know, as we as we signed for it, you know, signed that uh -huh. we were okay with that, gave them permission if that became necessary. So let me go back. Whenever you had had the open heart surgery, and, and you had been through the open heart surgery, and then whenever Victoria and I wondered why in the world they weren't calling us back. They had given us an idea of what the time schedule would look like, and it was, I feel like it was at least two hours over. It was supposed to not be long at all, because the doctor calls at the end of the heart surgery, a nurse calls you several times during the surgery to give you updates, and then the doctor calls to let you know we're done, everything went well, you'll be able to see him up, you know, in, what is it? Cardiac Recovery. critical care yeah, unit uh, in about probably in about thirty minutes. Well, it was like two hours, and we're like, what? it was one and a half to two hours. And we're like, what in the world is going on? And so we started trying to figure out where it was at. And Victoria and I said, well, let's go up there. So we go up there. We meet a family who begins to share with us their story, what they've gone through, how things were going with their father who was in there. And the doctors, I loved it, kept telling Mike, you're young for this. You're young for this. People are usually 20 years older before they're dealing with this. I told Mike, I said, you got it on official word. You are young. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, whenever... Well, I'd started feeling pretty old dealing with the symptoms <laughs> Well, of that. yeah. Well, Empire. passing out. Passing out just when you're walking across the yard or bending down to pick up a stick. Yeah. It was very interesting. <laughs> but anyway, whenever we found you and we spoke to you, I don't even want to go into all that. We don't have time to go into that. But, you know, there were... It was... Let's see. We became very aware that something 
urgent was going on. We had a sense of urgency. Well, it hit me whenever you were sharing that, when Victoria and I, you know, got out of their way and left the hospital because we felt like they're trying to attend to him. Number one, we couldn't. You know what? Let me let me stop you just a second. Okay. Because y'all knew I was in distress by the way the doctors were acting and responding. All, all of the personnel. The natural response would be, well, we may, we better stay here and see. You know, mm-hmm. he might die. Mm-hmm. And yes. so it's somewhat of an act of faith. Yes. Yes. Because I. I mean, <laughs> well, that y'all, y'all loved. Well, and I want to say that as soon as we, as Victoria and I are walking to the car, we, I, let's see, I called our other adult daughters. We did, I think we did a real quick FaceTime. Uh, at some point, I called Faye, Andrews, Faye and Jim Amen. to get agreement. Thank, thanks to Faye um, and Jim, I tell you, we've just, good, good friends. Yes, Dear yes. friends. Well, I mean, listen to me. It matters who you call. It does. It matters who you call. Don't just call anybody. I was just sharing a different testimony I don't have to have time to go into. And it matters who we call in emergency situations. Are we going to call somebody uh, that knows how to pray? Are we going to call someone to panic with us? Are we going to call someone for sympathy? Think real hard prayerfully on who we need to call. That Amen. needs to already be settled. That needs to already be settled. So anyway... We, whenever we left, Victoria and I could have gone to get drinks. I could have drank all I wanted. I just didn't want to drink anything. I don't drink. I opt not to drink. I choose not to drink because that I feel like it doesn't make us better. No, it doesn't I make me like better. I'm, it doesn't make I'm me far worse. Better off since I, quit I just drinking, though, I, I there are say. no benefits to be found whatsoever. And, but in that situation, it could have been. I mean, if that was one of our go tos. But listen. The, the nudging that we felt and the sense of uncomfortableness, put, we had a sense we needed to pray. And I want to pull right back into, listen, there are loved ones who went on to glory and they got there before you knew it. You, they got there before their physical body shut down. There are several aspects here. Number one, <coughs> believers are there instantaneously, you know, from so many testimonies we've heard. But also, just because their body's going doesn't mean they're still here. And, and very often, we already covered it, they don't even want to be here. And it's not because they want to leave loved ones. They still love you. They still love their family members. You know what? When you're, when you're in heaven, you're in eternity. Yes. And, and time is irrelevant. Yes, yes, yes. I was, I was in heaven... <laughs> It just seemed so brief. Right. But my body lay in a coma in the hospital with no life support for three days, three, three days. nights. Three days, three nights, and you felt like you had a conversation <laughs> with your grandmother. No, I knew I had a conversation. No, no, no. I'm saying it only felt as long as a sh- brief well, conversation. Well, yeah, yeah. I talked to her, met all my other relatives that yeah. I've since forgotten. Yeah. My sister had an identical experience years before. She hemorrhaged to death due to um, undiagnosed Crohn's disease. Mm-hmm. And she she was in a death ward. Doctor checked on her, and Diane says the doctor walked out of the room. Door closed behind him. She said, "Just like that, I was out of my body, and I went into the hallway." And my mom, our mom, was walking up, and she heard the conversation. She later told my mom, "Mom, I died." And mom tried to, "Oh no, honey, you didn't die. It was just a bad dream." Right. Diane told mom what she told the doctor behind closed doors. Yeah. And what doctor told her? Yeah. And uh, (laughs) anyway, she saw. Granny Thorpe mm-hmm. had the same. We both were laughing because we would we would start wondering who somebody was, and before we could ask Granny, before she could answer us, we'd know who they were. <laughs> you know, just yeah. like the Mount of Transfiguration with yes. Peter, James, and John, they 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 saw Moses and Elijah. Yeah, and and they recognize how did they recognize them? Yeah, because they were enjoying a taste of heaven on earth. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So go ahead. I'm, well, and I think or, we could uh, just go the, forever on the this. The Bible says that uh, that a day in heaven, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as, it's a, is, as a day. We've got loved ones who have gone to heaven, and and the way they felt on the other side of that curtain, and they had entered into heaven, their heavenly place and home with family was i'll see my loved ones tomorrow can you yeah, imagine <laughs> yeah i'll see them soon i'm gonna see well, them soon. i remember praying and it brings tears to my you know just i remember praying for someone that was on life support in a coma and uh that had a trauma traumatic brain incident uh injury yeah not injury it was not an injury it was a, a, a 
basically a massive embolism it sounded mm. like yeah yeah and uh and we'd been asked to come pray for him and we stepped into the room to pray for him mm -hmm. and i remember immediately being caught up into heaven and now my body i was standing there but i was more aware it's like i was looking through a portal and i was looking into heaven yes and it was a young lady and i remember seeing her and she was approaching the throne of god and mm -hmm. jesus mm -hmm. And I, I told her it was it was Debbie Booth, you know, and and I don't know if I ever even told Julie about this, uh, but I remember telling Debbie. I said, Debbie, you got to come back. And about that quick, Jesus stopped me. He said, She just. She, she said, said, I just got I here. Just, but I just got here. And, and and Jesus called me. He said, She's never known this kind of peace. Peace and freedom. And freedom. Mm -hmm. And and it was so funny because I noticed her hair was down and and just kind of flowing and and, and uh you know th th then all of a sudden somebody in, had some of the staff they were anxious to get her off life support yeah and i i didn't have time to convince her and and they interrupted but i have an idea her mind was made up anyway yeah and and, and next thing i know i i can't see her anymore it's all, you know all that's gone mm -hmm. that that portal so to speak is now closed mm -hmm. now i didn't go in there saying i want to see her i want to talk to her Right. I just started praying. I had no idea that was going to happen. Right. So you just got to follow God, right. and he'll take you where you need to be to well, do what you need to do and help you get it done. And this is what was <clears throat> so important whenever we prayed. And I want to urge people, in this day and time, we are living in a day and time where there is a lot of stress. There's a lot of stressors. We're, we're observing situations we never imagined we would ever see in our lifetime. Yeah. And listen, there are also situations that want to weigh heavy on you, but the response, the best response, think about it. Think about what would have happened if Victoria and I in that situation had said, you know, it's been a long day. It's been a long, what was it, six months or whatever leading up to that surgery, yeah. uh, what have you. What if we had just said, you know, we just need a break. Like, let's go get a high tie. <laughs> what my, if, my, my tie, sorry. <laughs> and what, what if we had just, if that had been our response, I have no doubt there would have been a different outcome. But I do believe in that in this unique situation, the reason we had a sense of nagging, let's see, just a urgency, nagging urgency, the best response was to pray. I want to urge parents Whenever you see crazy stuff going on with your loved ones, with your kids, with your adult Grand kids, kids, pray. Give yourself to prayer. Yes, it's tempting to want to relieve the stress, but what is it doing in the spiritual realm to relieve the stress in a natural you know, way? Uh, I never, Let's do something that will move some mountains. I never, I never escaped a problem through drinking or drugs, but what it was bigger when I came back. Right, right, right. <laughs> Well, and, and listen, I mean, we prayed, and, and I'll tell you, the Lord met us on several levels. We began to enter into prayer in the car. We needed privacy to pray. You need privacy to give yourself to prayer. Uh, it was quiet prayer. We weren't very loud. There were some strong uh, uh, unctions, words that came to verses that came to us that we prayed and decreed and declared. We were firmly taking authority over the our adversary, the devil, mm -hmm. as something would come to mind. But we weren't just rah 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 devil rah rah rah. We weren't focused on the devil. We were focused not on fighting prayer. Not fighting for the victory. Fighting from no, no. the victory. <laughs> right. Not fighting for the victory. Fighting from the victory. And and, mm -hmm. and we prayed. The Lord met us with comfort. The Lord met us with, he de-stressed us. He de-stressed us. Being in his presence, in his presence is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Now listen, that fullness of joy wasn't there immediately. We needed to pray through something. And in this particular situation, there was a liberty to pray with regards to it, to stand with regards to it. And it didn't take more than 45 minutes. 45 minutes at the very most, 55 and, minutes and that we were know, praying. My memory during that time, because I, my, my body was sedated, laying on a gurney. Yes. As a couple, a couple like one or two eyes. of the nurses were standing there crying because they thought I was gone. Yeah. And they were doing everything they could to keep me from being gone, the doctor was. And, and during that time, and while they were praying, I was standing at the threshold of heaven 
and the door was open. I could mm -hmm. see in. And <laughs> did you see me and Victoria to, going? No. No, I was talking to Jesus. I wasn't see, aware of anything. See, we weren't. So while very often while you're down here praying for people in those situations, yeah, they're right. They're already at the door and they're talking to Jesus. And I was talking to Jesus. Yeah. And He gave me the option. I've I've died three times we know of. Yeah. Uh, and, and this was one of them. And yeah. so I'm standing there, and Jesus essentially asked me what I wanted to do. He knew how much I missed. You know, life hadn't been easy. This world, this world is designed to. Well, it's it's set for your destruction. Well, we that's why very levels. often people's lives are so miserable. To me, it's it's kind of like a holding cell for hell at times, and for a lot of people, that's why they've gone. It, it just represent, but re well, so many represented a hellish ex experience, and and. Uh, I can remember the Lord asked me what I wanted to do. Yeah, there's a better way to live. Yes. And I, you know, the Lord asked me what I do. I said, I, well, I don't want to abandon my girls. I don't want to abandon my girls. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because I was thinking about my immediate responsibility, Robin and Victoria. P.S. If you listen to that answer, that means he really wanted to go on. Yeah. Do you catch that? <laughs> he really wanted to go ahead and enter into he said when he was in heaven he never felt as free he never felt as light he never, never felt as peace. liberated he never felt the peace it's worth it the peace the on peace the alone. inside on the inside yeah so there are loved ones you know that have gone on they found a peace there they can't even partake of you know here on yeah. planet earth yeah. like what well, is and there there's, there's like some is there. that the you know depending on what they were dealing with physically here yeah that to return, they've got the prospect of recovery. And it's not always an instantaneous miracle. Right, right. You know, the doctors were convinced that the reason I wasn't on life support the first time I died uh, by overdose was because I'd been dead so long, the doctor determined that he didn't think I would would survive on life support anyway. There were certain but he said if by some miracle I did, I'd be a vegetable sitting in a chair drooling on myself. That's how he described me to my mom. Right. I think that might be what provoked God to send me back, <laughs> you know, just to prove him wrong. I don't know. Well, and she prayed a releasing <laughs> prayer. And she you know said what, Mom? She, she prayed yeah, if, he can she put a, me on the altar. if he can have a fruitful life. Raise him up, heal him a if happy he can't. Life, yeah. If he can't, yeah. And she so wanted you to be happy and fulfilled because you were having so many struggles and you were so unhappy. Yeah. So that was a very releasing prayer for a mother to pray, <laughs> and and in this unique. But, but the reason I'm sharing this, it's I don't want people to struggle, and to feel like why didn't my loved one come back. Why isn't my loved one here with me now? Listen to me. Our loved ones who are in heaven are laughing. They're smiling. They are meeting up with people. They're talking to Smith Wigglesworth. They're talking to Jesus. They can go sit on a bench and talk to Jesus or go hug him any time they want. They've never felt so accepted, so loved, so embraced. They have such incredible peace. And they have such an assurance that God, who they are in the presence of, can be right here manifest presence for your comfort and for my comfort today. And it is imperative that we latch on to, to the fact that we don't grieve as those who have no hope. Glory to God, our loved ones are in our future in Christ Jesus. Amen. And there is nothing more comforting. And there's also, I think it's amazing, it keeps us right on track to remember, you know what, we got to tell others. We need to make others aware of this when Amen. we remember that we're going to be reunited with those loved ones. And listen, I can remember in the passing, in the passing of a little one that we were praying we were in prayer for the family and and all of you know for comfort and for strength and and do you remember the word that the lord gave you you said something we were praying about empty arms here on earth the ache of empty arms here on earth which i believe every parent has felt mm -hmm. and, you know and i think but we don't have to stay there we don't have to stay there don't stay there don't Amen. stay there in that place but the spirit of god spoke to you and said oh but there are full arms up here in heaven and you could see the longest row 
along this row of, of rockers with grandmothers sitting in rockers rocking and just having the joy of holding and playing with and the laughter of children and, and babes in their arms. Now listen, that doesn't mean we don't miss them. Don't ever, you know, I, I don't, I'm not making light of that. But I just don't want people to feel like <coughs> to God, feel tormented God didn't by the passing. Snatch them away. No, no. You I don't know, want people feeling tormented away. by the passing of loved ones. So back in the situation, Victoria and I prayed by the Spirit of God. I want to urge you, whenever you're tempted to get a drink to relieve stress, I'm going to pray in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit will remind you there are better you options. have an option. You have an option. And whatever situation tries to weigh on us, it is so much better for us to go to the Lord in prayer. We are moving mountains. God can tell us exactly the thing to pray. And there are some situations. Don't don't you know, don't take it for granted. A lot of times people's lives are like a balled up knot of yarn or yeah. a ball of yarn. It may take a while. It can, it may it take, can take more a while. Than one it can too. take a while, but I want to benefit my loved ones. I want to chip I want to make choices every day that benefit my loved ones that are here on earth and my loved ones that are there in glory you know and there are ways that we can lift up the most high and give people hope let's pray Amen. for salvation listen yeah. the word of god says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that Amen. whosoever whosoever believeth in him, believeth should, in not him should not perish but have everlasting life Amen. jesus died he 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 bore the pain he bore the he bore diseases in bore his body sin. he bore the he bore the, the fruit of sin he bore the full penalty for every person whenever he died on the cross not only did he die on the cross he entered death hell and the grave and then he was raised up glorious and victorious but he did it for you he did Amen. it for me he did it for our loved ones don't you don't you get tired praying for the salvation of your loved ones if you're feeling weary praying for your loved ones you're so close it's so close the devil's trying to discourage you and your prayers are a threat you just keep thanking god for their eyes being opened yes in life. yes it, the ephesians prayer is so good for the sure is. for the saved and the unsaved yes yes and that's that's over in the first chapter in the yes. third chapters of Ephesians. You'll see it. Paul says, yes. For this cause I bow my knee yes. unto the Father but if you, of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd like to receive Jesus as your Lord <clears throat> and Savior, pray this prayer with us today. Amen. You pray me. Pray. Praise God. You can go ahead and pray. Father God, I come to you now. I thank you that Jesus paid the price for me so I wouldn't have to. Father, I invite Jesus to come into my heart. I believe that he died, that he, that he rose again, and that he is alive and well today. And I thank you for him coming in and making my heart his home. I receive him. I receive all that you have for me. Thank you, Father, as well for the infilling of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Oh, I thank you, Father, that you're teaching me, that you're guiding me, that you have things for me to do and to accomplish here on earth. Thank you that you are the God and the Father of hope, of hope. I thank you for a divine supernatural hope for every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you've never received Jesus before, or maybe even if you have, uh, message us your address if you'd like to. We've got a little book here, yeah. and I can hold it up, but you couldn't read it if I did. It's going to be backwards. I think <laughs> it's going to be backwards. Oops. And, uh, I'm but turn it's that around. Excellent little book written by Brother Billy Joe Darty before he went to be with Jesus. Yeah. And it's called This New Life. Right. And it talks about what happened when you asked Jesus into your heart and how you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you just bring up another good point. If there are praying parents out there that are listening to us and you are just getting frustrated or you wish you knew more clearly how to pray, we have another mini book very similar to this. It's actually by Pastor Billy Joe Darty, who's gone on to heaven. He used to be my youth pastor in Tulsa, Oklahoma, whenever my dad went to Rama. And there, him and his wife, Sharon, were such a blessing in, in my life. But we have another booklet, How to, what is the title of that book? Promises, to, pray promises, to, God's promises to Pray for Your Child, or Promises to Pray for Your Children. And listen to me, this is the most wonderful book of verses and scriptures to pray for our child, for our and, grandchildren. <laughs> They're wonderful. We'd love to give it to you for free if you let us know. You might feel like you're at the end of it praying for your loved ones, your children, uh, your extended family. You, you might be where Moses was 
before he went to the desert. <laughs> don't wait till you're 80, okay? I don't care how close you are. Don't wait till you're 80. Ask the Lord what you need to pray for your family. Yes. Get filled with the Holy Ghost so you can pray in tongues yes, for your family. Yes, yes, yes. And give yourself to the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because, see, there are times that we don't know what to pray because we don't know what's keeping them from God. But the Lord, well, the Lord does, does know. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, the good thing about, about praying in the Spirit, okay. we never even read the rest of our text, but the good thing about praying in the Spirit is is not only does the Holy Ghost know how to pray, but God knows how to understand him and will grant the petitions that are prayed yeah. when you give yourself to him. That's where verse 28 comes into play. We know, And we know that all things work together for the good to those that love God, to those that are called according. Well, they work together for the good because they're praying in the Spirit. Yes. Amen. Yep, Can't yep. miss with that. God bless you. We will see you next week. We went long today. Listen, you don't have to listen to this all in one sitting. But I do encourage you to listen and be encouraged by what the Lord had to share today. And we will pick up with this next week. Amen. God bless you and keep you till we meet again. Amen. Amen.